Okay, so the last speaker of this uh, session is uh, Alessandro Capuzzo. Okay, thanks for your time and for the opportunity to have this talk here. I'm going to present a new framework inspired by Bryson Pisma Information Theory. I will quickly introduce the ontology, describe our elementary massive particles, and a relativistic description of time emerged in the framework, and propose an output towards quantum gravity with a possible experiment. I will touch uh, uh, known ideas but from a radical new perspective, and I hope this will bring some value. Present is, is an ancient interpretation of time for which only the present exists. In the search for a quantum theory of time, it has been already discovered by several scholars, including Alara, which has some similarities with my model. The common uh, question of uh, I mean, is present in it is how a relativistic description of time is compatible given the existence of a typical equation of it. In my interpretation of presentism, uh, from an uh, information theory perspective, I consider the thick present as an ontological memory which encodes the information potential and evolves in atomic instance. So the idea of the present is intended like uh, a thick, uh, an atomic evolution, and the idea of becoming of the present is so the quantum information potential is intended as something which is encoded in this ontological memory which evolves in atomic instance. You should think about this atomic instant as a very fast peak. Here I consider twice the prime time, twice because in this time symmetric framework it's uh, considered from the future boundary and the past boundary of the present. Events are considered irreversible and or they're in a causal set at the past boundary of the present. They are actually irreversible because, because you cannot change something that does not exist anymore. What do we have in the present? We imagine an imaginary lattice, which is a boundary between the past and the future part of the present, which will include information as we will see. And we have basically global, it's a lattice because we have global reference of change as key elements of our description. We have this universal peak, which is the present cycle, and this imaginary step. Why imaginary? Because we consider a weak rotation, and you can imagine this as basically the fuzzy Euclidean space that you can have in with rotation. And you have a relational description of the imaginary space from any possible location inside this. Where is the information? Where is the ontological information in its description? Entanglement, again, is a key word. And here we introduce a, a, a novel interpretation of entanglement in terms of memory loops. Loops are described as a superposition of a forward and a backward contribution, I don't know what to say. And that are the element that represents the relation between causal non separability and cyclicity of the causal structure. Moreover, loops are also the most elementary circuits to encode information. In our model, we consider two types of entanglement entanglement in space, which is intended as a ER APR, so a kind of tunnel in potential in the lattice, and it's modeled with loops in time, so loops in the thickness of the present, in these two models, with a forward and backward contribution from the boundary of the present. While entanglement in time, intended as an undefined causality, so an undefined causal order, is modeled with loops in space, which are loops actually in this imaginary space. So you should think of them like kind of path integral superposing a forward and backward contribution. What can we do with this elementary structure in the present? Let's start to see how elementary massive particles can be described. Here again, we have a model which is similar to Haro, which describes the locality of the particles in terms of modular operators that are from the boundary of the present. Uh, in our mathematical description, we relate the cat and the bra to the, from the past and the future boundary of the present, and we describe this non locality through uh, momentum, momentum in space, and momentum in time. The momentum in space is basically classical momentum, but here intended in this imaginary space, so the gradient of the phase of the wave function. But the momentum in time is basically related to the invariant information, uh, to the reduced component wavelength, if you want, and it's mathematically described as the logarithmic scale, basically, of this information of non locality. The idea of non locality described through loops, these loops in the thickness of the present, take physical realization here with the wave function, the brand decay being described as this bundle of forward and backward path in the thickness of the present. And you can imagine like in Flatland in Abbott, I don't know if you know about this book, where the imaginary space is like the flat space, and from this 
thickness you have this non locality. We can describe this idea of non locality in the thickness of the present also from the perspective of the imaginary space with a novel interpretation of celestial sphere and celestial holography. And basically, we map the past boundary of the present to null and the future boundary of the present to infinity. In this representation, it's uh, easier to identify this kind of amplitude, which is related to the momentum of time, which I was uh, referring before, and its counterpart, so basically uh, the, the bound the other side. Given this mapping, can be understood as the Dirac belt or the string from infinity that we associate to fermions, which in this model is nothing but this momentum in time from the boundaries of the present. So you should imagine the Dirac belt that we use when we describe spinners and the 4 pi revolution as this momentum from the boundary of the present. And when you do the 4 pi revolution of the spinners, you don't entangle this string from infinity. What can we do? What, what can we say beyond the non-locality of the particle described in this fashion from the boundary of the present? We believe that there is more and that there is a relation between matter and entanglement in time. And this is a, a novel proposal. We start from the consideration that spin one half particle in model with a discrete time can be described with a, an extended period in which basically the fermion explored the phase across the boundary of the isthmus. In our description, this revolution of, of like spin up and spin down is described again as a superposition of imaginary path which eventually closed in a loop in this revolution across the isthmus. And this is a, an indication of an entanglement in time in our understanding of, of uh, the thesis. And basically, has two important consequences. First, it gives fermions the ability to discriminate these sticks because they have a phase that crosses the boundaries of, of an instance. So basically, fermions somehow being entangled across the boundary of the instance remembers the previous phase. And then there is a crucial relation between the idea of a persisting information along the evolution and this entanglement across the instance. So basically, a relation between the persisting information and varying mass and eventually the momentum in time. So we believe, we believe that the momentum in time and the mass actually emerge from the entanglement in time of the momentum that we are describing for so of this parallel potential in space that travels over two instants. Okay, this, all the things might look very fancy and nice, but how we recover what we know? How we recover, for example, special relativity and time dilation in this framework where we have it all, all encoded the information potential and what is possible. We consider the evolution of the particle from the last collapse event and describe it through its causal cone and the entanglement information between the particle and the rest of the universe. And describe this in information in the causal cone as a combination of an entanglement in time and an entanglement in space. Basically, when the particle between two collapse event, the, the particle as a, an amount of information, which is, a, we say in our language, sample in non locality, and given the total bound of the information in the causal code, there is a reduced information of entanglement in time that was connected to the moment in time. And basically, if you do the math, of, I call it kind of relativity of informational sampling, because basically you have a bound of information and you relativistically sample non locality or in space or undefined causality in time. At the collapse event, this information is basically released in terms of a dislocation in space, a quantum jump in space, and a quantum jump in time, which should be intended in this model as a causal agent. So how we recover the proper time in a present framework? As a subsampling of the universities. In the universe, this foliation, this uh, ontological memory, which encodes what can happen, evolves in atomic instance, a massive particle, basically has a, a proper time, which is a reduced time compared to the Newton and absolute time that this peaking is de defining, because it integrates less information of entanglement time between collapse events. So, and we get the same results with special relativity, basically. What can we say about quantum gravity in this uh, framework? Again, we consider an interesting perspective in terms of curvature as an asymmetric tunneling probability in the lattice. 
Okay. And this is an idea that, which is not new, but in this framework might find a, a, a very nice application in which basically you describe the gravitational, the Newtonian potential in this case as a combination of what they call the information of the past, which is basically the entanglement in time of the mass, and a kind of information of the future, which is basically the imaginary time distance between where we have got the curvature and the mass that we are basically uh, from, you know, that is generating this potential. In this uh, figure, here basically this beta is the, amp curvature, the amplitude of the curvature, this is the Newtonian potential, and this beta n is the same that was introduced before in the uh, map, the hyperbolic mapping of the boundary of the present to the infinity, uh, this beta n here. So this momentum in time generates the curvature at n imaginary steps from this point due to this component of the mass. So the idea is basically we have matter which is a persisting information which in a discrete time evolution means an entanglement across the distance because it's an indication of persistence of information and curvature which is an asymmetric time in probability which is an entanglement in the lattice and we believe that we can we should try to experimentally verify this relation. So having a circuit like a series of a circuits generating in time of the time, even an array, like small loops mentioned, and for example, a, a random box affected by this generated curvature. So I believe this could be a quite a different way of approaching to quantum gravity, starting from a quantum of time, a quantum of evolution, a quantum of change. And from there, work up all the way up to information. And finishing, <laughs> this is basically the last slide. This is a more general thought. Given the fact that we are in a quantum information uh, conference, the idea is that we can describe basically everything from information and code it at different level of abstraction. I've reported several examples, even in general AI transformers, for the ones that are in general AI. And I believe that if everything ever comes to information, then everything must rely on memory. So from the existence of our universe to the awareness of our existence, we can say memory of the which is in beyond cogito, because to cogito, to be a cogito answer as cogito answer, you need to have a memory to encode. It, which might be quantum or not, I'm not entering these details, but I'm saying that at, like, at different levels, like different protocol levels, Everything emerges from information, so everything relies on memory. So what I've introduced a lot of different concepts. Some of them I think are quite radical, and I hope we can uh, do some experiment on that. Here is a short summary. Thanks for your time. So, Thank you. Inequalities, um, so sort of like that test of in time. Yeah. So, do you have any insight of me? I guess not. But the entanglement in time is described in a similar way, like in the experiment of Flaminia or Kasla Burger. So, basically, it's the same kind of thing. In this model, is just described, we identify the, uh, the entanglement in time through this imaginary path. Which goes in loop and this maps the relation between cyclicity of the causal structure with this uh, undefined causality. So I I not I haven't defined the math of this part of the value inequality on this kind of things. I was more trying to figure out the general framework to build on top of that, but I believe they are in the same way, they respect the same kind of uh, inequalities and then entanglement in time, it's similar things to what we are already discussing in the experiment of entanglement in time, but there we are just looking at the undefined causality. And we are not designing the experiment to think about how can this represents a persisting information which might be related to potential culture. Thanks. Okay, let us thank uh, Alessandro
We now have coffee break and we come back at 11.25.